Hi everybody, it's Cynthia Varkavisser. Today I thought it'd be fun to talk about our three bodies. Now, I know you're saying, well, yeah, three bodies, it kind of makes sense. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a little bit of definition around it so that we can talk about intuition on a higher level. So here are our three bodies. We have our physical body, we have our emotional body, and we have our intuitive spiritual body. And I'm going to use the, uh, use the word intuitive alone because sometimes uh, spirituality or the word spiritual can lead to a bigger conversation. And I'm happy to have that conversation. It's just for right now, we wanna talk about the three different bodies. So I want you to know that these three different bodies are you. They surround, they are you, meaning that they are, um, even though it's parts that you can't see, they are you. If you have an emotion, you know that that's you and that's part of your body. You know when uh, when you know something without having the uh, information to back it up as an intuitive thing, you know that's you. So we'll talk about the bodies of it. So the first body that we have, and actually I like to consider as the third body, is your physical body. It's the densest of all the energies, meaning that it's the last thing to get the information and it's also the last piece to release information. And we'll discuss that in just a moment. Your second body is your emotional body. That is an energy. Emotions are energy. But I want you to know that, in, that these emotions are finite energy, meaning that sadness doesn't go on forever and ever. Um, happiness doesn't go on forever and ever. Um, all the emotions that we have, they are not infinite. It is finite. It's a finite energetic body and it goes beyond us, which is, um, which is why we have, we have the capacity to have these big emotions, right? Because it's much bigger than my five foot four X amount of pounds frame. Okay. The last is your intuitive spiritual body. It is the lightest of all your bodies. Why? Because it's the type of energy that we carry or don't carry emotions. Or something that we actually hold on to and we carry and it's based on our memories so even though it's an energetic body and it's definitely lighter than our physical body it is not as light as our spiritual body our spiritual body is actually or our, oh, i keep saying i wasn't going to say spiritual here i am is your intuitive body and your intuitive body your spiritual intuitive body doesn't carry judgment it doesn't have judgment because it just is all right so it's the lightest of the of the um, bodies. So I like to think of it all as uh, similar as water. So uh, your intuitive spiritual body is water in its gas form. Emotional body is water in its liquid form. And your physical body is water in its ice form. It's the, it's the least flexible. It's the most rigid. So here's what happens when, when conflict arises. Uh, and why people usually gain weight or get rashes or things like that. What happens is that our intuitive, our emotional body is so strong that it actually affects our physical body. It sounds kind of crazy, but here's, here's how it goes. I'll use me for weight as an example, and hopefully um, you can follow along with it. And if not, I'm happy to have uh, further conversations with you, but here we go. Let's just say someone has uh, hurt my feelings and my best friend is food. We've heard this all before. And so the physical activity is hurt feelings, going to eat, and then I gain weight because, because it serves its purpose of comforting me. But let's get down to this part. So my emotional body is um, re responding to a memory. Now, it's everybody's memory is a little bit different and which that the solution at that time, the very first time, was food. Now for me, you're gonna love this, is that my very first time, my example was my dad. My dad, whenever he was stressed out, got nervous, he ate. So it was really easy for me to pick up that um, habit. Now, let's go back. So what's happening is that there is an uncomfortableness in my emotional body. So in order to feel like I can align my emotional body with my physical body, I need to do a physical activity. And for me, that's eat. Then what happens is that that emotion actually goes into your physical body. And then 
it stays within your physical body. So it's not, it's no wonder that when we hold on to emotions, we gain weight or we have sleeping problems, it affects our physical nature. Because what we do is that we have a physical action to try and balance out our emotional body. Weird, I know, but true. So the second part of this is, is that what's that got to do with your intuitive spiritual body? So here's how this works. Um, if we can work it, I'll call it backwards and forwards, okay? So we have a spiritual or an intuitive thought. So my intuitive thought is, I'm amazing, I stand out. And then it taps into a memory that is counter to what has been intuited. And that makes me uncomfortable. So then I create an action. The action then affects my body. For me, it's weight gain. So what happens is that I try and go on a diet. The reason that it's really hard to, to work that out is because there's an emotional and uh, spiritual connection that needs to happen in order for the physical to be a success. So that's why sometimes weight gain, weight loss works for me and sometimes it doesn't. It has to do with the alignment. If I can get in alignment intuitively and make it right with my emotions, then the weight is going to come off. Now it's not a secret magic bullet in that I'm gonna think, oh, I'm great. And then all of a sudden I'm 30 pounds lighter. But what does happen is that, you know, people will call it mindset, but I like to call it intuition, is that I have made an agreement, which is this, this no longer serves me. That this, I'd rather be in uncomfortable in my um, emotions and take a look at my emotions than have this weight on me. And then what will happen is that food doesn't taste the same. It's weird. Um, and yet it's a weird, it's an interesting alignment. So just know that you have three bodies. The three bodies, once they're in alignment, things go smoothly. When they're not in an alignment, that's where there's conflict. So conflict can be, you know, when I think of conflict or when people think of conflict, they, between, they think of two people or more, but really the conflict always starts at home, it starts here, and then it gets projected outward. I hope that you get some, uh, some information and some takeaways from this. I would love to talk about this more. Um, feel free to check me out. My website is down below or on Facebook, and I will talk with you soon.